Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to another um, site care webinar for optical support staff. Uh, this is the uh, fourth week now we've been uh, running these sessions. And see, today's topic is about contact lenses. Uh, again, we've got quite a lot of people uh, due to attend, so we'll just give them a couple of minutes for everybody just to uh, get, get online to start. Um, if you've missed any of the previous webinars, they are available on the um, SiteCare website. So uh, I'm uh, Anthony Blackman. Uh, you've listened to me for about the next sort of 50 minutes, and then there's some time at the end um, to go through some, some questions. Um, so I'm a director of training at Insight Optical Training. Um, we've been delivering these uh, sessions uh, in partnership with, with SiteCare over the last four weeks. Uh, I'm also a dispensing optician and contact lens optician in private practice, although like most of you, I've been furloughed for a few weeks now. And I'm also um, a trustee for the British Council of Prevention of Blindness that funds research into blindness prevention and a trustee for vision care for homeless people that provide sight tests and spectacles to the people that can't access the uh, NHS scheme. Uh, my email address at the bottom of the screen but it'll come up again uh, at, at the end of this webinar. So as I said, we've done a few of these sessions now. Uh, today is the, the fourth one, so optical assistant guide to contact lenses. You see we've also done other ones around um, ultraviolet light, uh, low vision aids and body language. I so said they're all available to watch again um, by the site care uh, website. So today's session about contact lenses is really just to give um, an overview about contact lenses and just give some, some knowledge really to, to sports I've in practice to, to boost confidence in talking to patients about contact lenses when they come in. And what we're going to cover over this session is a little bit about the contact lens market. Um, go about the advantages of contact lenses and why people want them. Quick look at the different the types of contact lenses that are available out there in the market. A uh, brief overview of contact lens care and also think about some of the common questions that the patients might ask you when they come in. Uh, speaking of questions, at the bottom of your screen there's a little box that says Q&A and that allow you to type in any questions that you have during this webinar and then at the end of the session we can go through those questions. So any point you've got a question just type it in the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen. So I'm sure you all know what a contact lens probably is, but effectively it's like a spectacle lens. So it provides that prescription. It has the curvature on it to focus the light, the back of our eye to allow us to see to correct our refractive error. The difference with contact lenses is that they are much, much smaller, thinner, and basically works invisible. I mean, I first wore contact lenses 20 years ago, and I was surprised that my spectacles with a, with a six syllabus stigmatism look so chunky in spectacle frame. Yet when you see that contact lens on your finger, it looks so thin, so small, you wonder how it can correct your vision. But that's all part of why contact lenses are, are so special to a lot of people is that they part of the market. Within the UK, the UK is the largest contact lens market going. It's about 300 million pounds a year. And that's actually just in the lenses, not excluding any solutions or care products. So patients spend a lot of money every year on their contact lenses. In 2019, there were 800 million contact lenses sold, and that was 9% of the UK population. So there's quite a lot of people that wear contact lenses, but still there's even a race number that have yet to experience the one of contact lenses and can improve their lives. So at the moment, the figure is hovering at least 4 million in the next few years. So we've got patients there with lenses, and that number is going to keep growing and will demand us as dietitians to buy that, that service in existing supply contact lenses. But why, why are people so interested in contact lenses? Well, I think Ben's face are basically, they don't like to buy some of the lenses a couple of times a week. So I think contact lenses, they are more natural without having to wear big heavy body frame lenses. I think advanced lenses and people's application we're doing active things outside of plan sports. A lot of patients I think on the mission, we start wearing lenses because they want to be able to go to the gym, go for running, play tennis without glasses, and get some weight. And also there's natural advantages, right? Because they're wide open, dirty, in main drops on them, you come inside in winter, you know, so that's like you're having friends of warm and the glasses stuck. That's happening to lenses. So there's a lot of advantages, and each person comes in with the very reasons why they like wearing their contact lenses, and turn to their glasses. 
which types best for sodium types contents out there. And then we want the different lengths of time, which will look at the frequency, how often the person uses a new contact lens. simple it's just out your eye and in the bin there's no case to clean there's no solutions to buy or use so it makes it nice and simple for people and makes it really really convenient because it's just so quick lens comes out job done none of this cleaning to worry about and because it's a nice sterile contact lens every time you wear them that minimizes the risk of any complications or any infections it's also really good for being flexible wear. So a lot of the patients that I fit don't start wearing contact lenses because they want to wear them all the time. They want to wear them maybe a couple of days a week or out socially. So being day, day disposable, they know that they've got that stack of lenses there and they just wear a pair of lenses whenever they feel like it. So it gives them the opportunity to decide how often they want to wear them. As I said before, Great for sports as well, particularly with day disposables, because once you play your game of football or been to the gym, you can just take the lenses out, chuck them all away, nice and simple. And nothing with day disposables compared to all the other types of contact lenses, they're the thinnest. So when the patient's wearing it on their eyes, it's going to be the most comfortable, and they're going to highly notice that they're there. Because they're designed to be worn just once, they don't have to be as thick as other types of contact lenses and nowadays things have improved quite a lot uh, when I started fitting contact lenses you couldn't get toric and multifocal designs whereas now we can so that allows us to correct astigmatism now up to, to two and a half doctors of astigmatism now be corrected with day lenses similarly the patients that need verifocals or multifocals we can do that as well with day disposable so you know, there's a big chunk of the patient database that can wear, successfully wear these lenses in case of their prescriptions. Now, for some people, they don't have daily, they've got the reusable type, so they have to take them out and at the end of the day, clean them and, and store them and then wear them again the next day. Now, the advantage of having a reusable lens that you have to look after is actually it works out cheaper if you're wearing the lens a lot so if you think you're wearing uh i think about work about pack a day disposables now if someone's spending perhaps say 30 pounds on a pack of 30 lenses that might cost a pound a day for wearing dailies if they're wearing a reusable lens those lenses are cheaper to buy so all of a sudden the cost per wear if you wear them every single day is going to be much less so it's much more cost effective for patients if they're going to wear the lenses full time. That's where about the, the cleaning and make sure that we explain that properly to the patients and that they understand how to clean their lenses and how to choose the solutions, which we'll cover at, at the end of this session. And it's also about replacing them on a regular basis. So with a reusable lens, so for example, a monthly lens, it's a month from when you first open the contact lens. So it's not a month's worth of wear, it's a month from when you first open that lens. So if you opened it today, you know, it was the first of the month, you opened it today, wore it today, and then only wore it again on the 30th of June, after that you've got to throw the lens away because it's the end of the month, it's been open for a month, and you've only worn it twice. Whereas if you're wearing it every single day of the month, you're gonna get 30 days wear out of that one lens and therefore it's much more uh, cost effective so they're not so good for that flexible wear but for regular you know, almost full-time wearers they, they are a very good option but with day disposables they're available to correct astigmatism with toric lenses and also in multifocal and verifocal designs um, reusable has been around longer than daily so they have a slightly wider range of parameters uh, particularly with astigmatism, we can create much higher amounts of astigmatism with a 
we use for lens than with a, a daily lens. If we go back even a bit further than before reusable lenses, we have things called, which are now called conventional lenses. So these come in these little um, glass vials, uh, suspended little solution of saline. And typically these lenses will last for either six or 12 months. So they're designed to, be, to last much, much longer. And these sorts of lenses, quite rare in practice now, though well, we've still got a few patients on them. Um, now these are individually custom made. So they tend to be um, lathe cuts, individually cut, <coughs> uh, cut from a, a blank material. So the thing with that is, is that because it's tailor made, it's much more expensive per lens um, to make and to buy these. But because they are custom made, we can have a much wider range of prescriptions. So if someone's got a very high prescription, or quite an unusual prescription, there's still probably contact lens out there that we can get for them. It just may not be the day disposable or the monthly type. We might look at these more conventional lenses, but that's where their, their niche is really, that we can use these to cater for much more unusual prescriptions. You know, with this sort of design, you know, over 95% of the patients in your practice can be catered for uh, for contact lenses. Another type we said about was the extended or continuous wear. So this is the, the people that are too lazy to take the lenses out and clean them. Um, they come in two categories. So they're the extended wear, where somebody will wear the lens for um, seven days and six nights. And the uh, Acuvue Oasis lenses uh, licensed for that uh, in the UK. And then we also have the continuous wear, which is designed for a month of wear. So uh, 30 days and 29 nights. Uh, and that's from the Pure Vision, uh, Biofinity, and also the Alcom Air Optics. The idea with the lenses is that you put them in, start of the month, and it stays there. So when you wake up in the morning, you instantly see clearly, and you don't have to worry about the, taking lenses out and cleaning them, disinfecting them. So it's pretty much for those lazy patients that can't be bothered to do a lot of care with this type of wear. So it's not really something that's ever been that successful in the UK. Um, within Europe, about 8% contact lens wearers are on this modality, with the other 92% being on reusable or day to format. So it's not that popular, and there are quite a few risks. Um, as practicing contact optician for the last 10 years, I've never fit anybody with continuous wear or extended wear lenses. And from my point of view, I always put it as, you know, you wouldn't wear your underwear for 30 days, so why would you wear the same contact lens for 30 days? You know? People wear this kind of modality because of how the lens deteriorates after 30 days. They tend to find that by the time they get to that fourth week of wearing the lens, that they're not as comfortable and their vision is not as good because they just accumulate a lot of dust and deposits um, on the lens that would normally be, be cleaned off with useful lens. So let's have a look at the, the types. And um, we're going to start a little history lesson for you. So, in terms of contact lenses, the first idea of the contact lens was around 1500 when. Leonardo da Vinci stuck his head in a bowl of water and realised that it uh, affected his vision. And he had the thought then that perhaps it could be used to allow people to, to see better. And then come forward in about 180 years, um, then there's some technical drawings were done by uh, Felipe de la Haire, and that was looking at how you could use uh, curved material, curved lenses, worn on the eye to correct vision. And that was talked about, but it was still just a, a theory on, on paper. It wasn't until the end of the 1800s uh, that Frederick Anton Muller started to actually produce a proper contact lens. And the reference for his lenses were that they were um, glass lenses. So they actually put glass in people's eyes. And these, what they call glass shells, uh, were put into the eye and they covered the whole of the visible part of your eye. So it wasn't like a normal lens we wear now, which just sits on the corner at the front. This covered the white of the eye as well. So they were quite large lenses, but being made of glass, they were inert. They didn't react with the eye. So they were fairly safe enough to put, put on the eye. But obviously putting glass in your eye is not ideal. Um, so about 50 years later, 
a Hungarian Istvan Griof uh, Goffi uh, developed the first plastic contact lenses. So these are made of perspex or PMMA, give it its chemical term. And with these, because they are plastic, they are much safer um, to put in your eye. The trouble with perspex is it doesn't allow any oxygen through. So a bit like glass, you know, wearing either of these types of lenses, when it's on the eye, it prevents oxygen getting through. It starves the cornea in front of your eye from oxygen that it, it needs to, to be active. So that all changed in, in the, the 1970s when gas permeable lenses were developed. So the name suggests being gas permeable, that allowed oxygen to travel through the lens to get to the, the cornea. So that's obviously much healthier because all of a sudden the cornea can breathe again. And those lenses were followed up with soft contact lenses uh, at the end of the 70s and they started being exported to Europe um, in the 1980s. And that's when sort of the, the modern sort of soft contact lenses started to appear. And those soft lenses now that are a majority of what we think practice and what our patients are wearing. So normally soft lenses around about 14 millimeters in diameter. So they're slightly bigger than the color part of your eye, the iris. So that means they fit nicely over that, they don't show up too much. Um, the lenses before that's so the gas permeable lenses that we don't see as many of now in practice. So these are the they're called rigid gas permeable because they're where the soft lens drapes over the cornea, a rigid lens actually sits on like a, a hard lens. And they're a bit smaller, so they're around nine to 10 millimeters. They sit just on the cornea, they don't overlap like a soft lens. Um, there's still a few people that wear the scleral lenses. So these were the bigger shells. So these are over 20 millimeters in diameter. And some of the ones that I've seen up to 25 millimeters in diameter. So they, they rather than, again, they don't sit on the cornea, they sit on the white of the eye. So it'll be much bigger than a, a standard um, contact lens. And then there's a few people out there with you know, slightly unusual prescriptions that are wearing something called hybrid lenses. And we'll show you a picture of one of those. But these ones have a, a rigid gas permeable center, but the outer edge of it is a soft contact lens. So it's a hybrid between gas permeable and a soft lens. And a similar sort of size to a soft lens because of the outer area being a soft lens. But we'll explain these in a, a little bit more of detail for you. But most of your patients are going to be on the soft lenses. So the first lens in the picture, the sort of blue tinted lens there, is your standard soft lens that's probably about 90% of your patients are going to be wearing those. The green one in the middle there is a, a gas permeable lens. So actually it's smaller than the soft lens. And then the big one on the right hand side there is a, a scleral lens. So you see that's much bigger than either of the other two lenses. And being that much bigger is why it sits on the white of the eye rather than on the cornea like the other two do. So soft contact lenses, hey, Bausch and Lomb were the first coming along with these in the 70s. And originally they were called hydrogels and they used water as a means to transmit oxygen through to the cornea to make them sort of healthier. And you had um, different water contents, so you had some called low water, some high water, and later on they developed some mid-water lenses. Essentially the higher the water content, the more oxygen came through to the cornea, which is, is good, we want the cornea to breathe. And then later on, in 1999, we developed something called silicon hydrogels. So these have really taken over from a lot of hydrogel patients and most now have transferred over to wearing these silicon hydrogel lenses. Now by adding the silicon part to the hydrogel greatly improves the breathability of the lens and how much oxygen can get through to the cornea. In, in some lenses this can get up to five times more oxygen than you can get with a hydrogel. So much much healthier and better for the eyes. And because of that, there has been a big push to move people onto this type of lens. And in terms of actual um, market share, it's sitting at around about 70% now in the UK being silicon hydrogel lenses. 
So we've done a lot of work over the last 20 years in moving people to this format. And a lot of the new fits that take place are probably going to be this kind of material. And we've seen some really good improvements with that auction. So considering the normal gel, sort of hydrophilic, so that's hydro being water, with then came our silicon lenses. Because of the much higher content, that also led to people's eyes actually looking uh, whiter and brighter. And because of the fact that the auction came through, this means actually we could allow people to wear lenses for long periods of time, so more days per week, more hours per day, without having a negative impact. So here we see wearing soft lenses, we just about see the lens edge here. And then this patient wearing his lenses quite happily, eyes are a little bit, a little bit red around the edges here. The eyes looking more normal. So that's really good, and we see a lot of benefits with that. And that's why now a lot of patients actually start off on silicon hydrogels as being the first choice for for most people, not everybody. There will be a few hydro lenses out there. And they're still manufactured, still people wear them quite happily because they're really comfortable. But for those people that want to wear lenses for longer hours, the silicon route is the, the best option. And this is why we're worried about oxygen. So normally the cornea, the, the clear part in front of the eye here, would normally not have blood vessels. It's normally transparent and we call it avascular, so it doesn't have its own blood supply. In this eye here, we can see that there's actually blood vessels actually growing into the cornea pretty much all around the lens. And the reason this happens is because the cornea is being starved of oxygen. It needs oxygen. If it can't get it from the air, from the tear film, then any other way is by the blood supply. So those blood vessels grow into the cornea to supply it with the oxygen that it needs to function. The thing with these blood vessels is, is that once they get towards the centre here, where the pupil is, where light's going in, that's going to start actually affecting somebody's vision because it's, when they look out to see, they're going to have these blood vessels going across the line of sight and affecting their vision. So this is very much just a dramatic slide to show you this sort of thing wouldn't happen overnight. Uh, we normally see it as just small growths in by maybe a millimetre or so at first. So this is a slightly exaggerated version, but it really just proves the point that the cornea needs a certain amount of oxygen and overwearing lenses, you know, we want to try and avoid that and again make sure people are wearing lenses sensibly. So we said most people wearing soft contact lenses, and why is that? Well, lots of advantages to them. Uh, first of all, there's the uh, initial comfort. So those of you that wear lenses or have had a lens in your eye will know that actually once you put the lens in, they feel pretty good. They're nice and comfortable right from the beginning. But some people might say it's like a, a slight sensation like in their eye, like an eyelash, but within a couple of minutes it usually disappears. And people, might, people can pretty much wear these lenses from day one. They wear them a couple of hours. We normally advise them to build up their wearing time gradually over the course of a few days. But for most of that period of time, they're going to be quite comfortable. And people are not going to suffer any discomfort or can be complained that they're uncomfortable. But the advantage is that they're good for sport. So because of the size of soft contact lenses being about 14 millimetres, they sit nicely covering the whole of the cornea and they tend not to move very much on the eye. There's always aspect that if you actually knock the eye or rub the eye, the lens isn't going to come out. And it turns long, long wearing times thanks to silicon. And if you look at things like day disposal, that gives us the flexibility for people to decide how often they want to wear them, even if it's only once a week or once a month. And in terms of chair time, they're really simple to fit and you know, that, that keeps chair time low and it means actually we can fit more patients more easily. Now obviously there's some disadvantages to soft contact lenses, not that many, but for new wearers some people can struggle a little bit with the handling of them. So if you've ever had to teach somebody how to wear contact lenses, sometimes they can find it a little bit fiddly at first. Now Usually with handling, once actually someone's had a proper teach session in how to handle the lenses, it doesn't usually become a problem, so it's only an initial problem. So when you're fitting patients with contact lenses, 
if they have trouble with handling, they're more likely to drop out before they complete their trial. So it's important really that from the beginning, we do a really good teach with people and show them how to properly handle their lenses, and that way it doesn't come at a disadvantage for them. And because soft contact lenses have a certain amount of water in them, there is that risk of dehydration of the lens. Uh, usually if the, if the environment is quite poor, so they've got to air conditioning or a very dry environment, or if the person's got quite bad quality tears, the lens can dry out over the course of many hours and it becomes a bit more uncomfortable. Now we can sort that out actually by changing the lens material. So if you had somebody who was on an old uh, high water hydrogel lens and we moved them to a modern silicon hydrogel lens, the modern lenses have much less water in them, so they don't dehydrate as quickly as an old lens. And all things around improving tear quality or using um, dry eye drops as well. Compared to other types of lenses, soft contact lenses are more easy to be damaged, uh, particularly with things like day lenses that are much thinner. Uh, they might just get a little, little nick or tear in them. Um, not so easy with some of the monthly lenses because they're just thicker because they're designed to be worn more. Another thing we find with contact lenses is that the price varies quite a lot. So I think back where I'm at work, you know, our cheapest day lenses start off at £24 for 30, might go up to £54 for 30 for the same description. So there's quite a variety in prices, and sometimes that can be a difficult conversation to have with, with patients. But, you know, with these disadvantages here, there's not really that much is fine to put somebody off wearing contact lenses. We can overcome most of these uh, issues. We move on now to gas permeable. So this is a much smaller part of the, the market now, thanks to soft contact lenses. And reason they're popular because of the fact they allowed oxygen to, put, to be permeable through the lens uh, until soft lenses came along and, and, and sold their thunder and took the market share. They're much smaller than soft lenses, so these are around about 9 to 10 millimetres. Um, the first gas permeables I wore 20 years ago were 9.3 millimetres in diameter. I know that because I've still got the packet. And being much smaller, they sit directly on the cornea rather than overlapping onto the white of the eye. And they're quite good at correcting astigmatism, and they do give really sharp uh, vision. As you can see in the picture here, uh, we've got the contact lens here just sitting nicely over the cornea, slightly offset, but it's still nicely on the cornea. So it's well hidden, so we don't really know um, that it's sitting there. And there's quite a few advantages to these lenses. So the first thing is, yes, they can be used to correct astigmatism. So because of how they, they fit against the eye, they can correct small amounts of astigmatism without having to have a specialist lens. Uh, they're much more durable than soft contact lenses. So um, typically people can wear these lenses, most of the time replace them around about, some people do it every six months, but often it's every year. Uh, occasionally you might get a patient who's very careful how they look after them. They might eat them out to two years uh, for one contact lens, which always makes them very good value for money. Uh, but also because a rigid gas pump lens is, is rigid, it doesn't dehydrate, it doesn't, doesn't tame lots of water. And there are more specialist uh, designs for more complex prescriptions. So from my point of view, somebody with a lot of astigmatism in my prescription, an RGP lens gives me excellent vision, a comparable or even slightly better than spectacles would. And also being gas permeable, they're quite healthy uh, for the eyes as well. There's quite a few disadvantages to gas permeable lenses, which is why soft lenses became so popular. Uh, first thing is the uh, initial discomfort. So if any of you have actually ever had a lens, it will increase that adaption time over the course of a couple of weeks and increase it by a much smaller amount each day. So it takes to be much more longer to come to these lenses. But the comfort does improve as you wear them. They're not recommended for the dust environments because you can get bits of that under the lens. So where a soft contact lens just drapes nicely over the contact on the other cornea, a rigid lens sits on the cornea and you get a tear exchange behind it. So you can get bits of dust in that you know, behind the lens and then that gets into the eye and that can feel quite uncomfortable. Um, similarly, because they just sit on, on the cornea, 
they're more likely to be able to be dislodged. So if you were to rub your eye, you could sort of move the lens around or actually knock it out. But it's quite important that we take more care in fitting these lenses. So we need a bit more, bit more time, a bit more experience in order to get the fit um, right for these. Uh, also, because the lens is quite small, you can find that some patients that have quite big pupils might get a little bit of reflection and glare um, off the edges of the lens, particularly at night time when driving. It's not so much a problem during the day because our pupils are smaller, but at night time, the pupil gets much bigger because it's dark and then you get a bit more of a, a glare issue with gas permeables that you don't get with uh, other types of lenses. And the cleaning is a bit more complicated as well. So it's not uncommon for people with gas permeable lenses to have to use things like protein remover or enzyme tablets as well as normal cleaning solutions in order to maintain the lenses because I don't replace them that often. Um, they're also not recommended for, for some sports world again because of how the ease that they can be uh, knocked around the eye, knocked out. Uh, where gas pump lenses have seen a bit of a resurgence in the last 10 years is with something called orthokeratology or ortho-K. And these lenses are uh, specially designed gas permeables, so the technical term is a reverse geometry. Uh, but effectively, these lenses are worn at night time. So you don't wear them during the day, just at night. And during the night time when they're being worn, they temporarily reshape the cornea at the front of the eye. And in the morning, you take the lens out and you can see clearly. So it's a bit different to other types of wear. Um, where I work, I typically use these for people with myopia control as well, which is why we gained popularity recently. So effectively, you see in the diagram, we've got our curved cornea at the front. And we've got our special ortho-K RGP lens, which is flatter. It's not completely flat, but it's a flatter curve in the centre. We put that on at night time just before going to bed. And then... Wear it for overnight, wear it for the morning, take the lens out, and our cornea now has taken on a new shape. And that new shape of the cornea will affect our prescription. And it means that that actually means you don't need to wear spectacles or contact lenses during the day. So it's a much, it's a much different way of using contact lenses because it means that during the day there's no lenses being worn, you haven't got any worries about. Um, dryness or discomfort with the lenses because it's only worn when you're asleep. And then during the day, the cornea here will slowly start to go back to its original shape. So it's only a temporary uh, change to the cornea. It's not causing any physical damage to the eye, but it's just temporarily reshaping the front of the eye to leave us uh, with clear vision and contact lens free during the day. And these have become more popular in recent years and we're seeing a bit more um, demand for them. And it's quite a good market for gas permeable contact lenses. So you, you might work in a practice that does ortho K or does more myopia control. So have a little have a little look. And then there's a few patients out there still wearing scleral lenses. So these are the, the older designs. Um, they're still used. Um, often it's uh, within um, hospital practice or people that have quite um, unused prescriptions or damage to their eyes. Now, we said earlier that they're quite large, so typically 22 to 25 millimetres. Because they're so big, they actually vault over the cornea, they don't actually touch the cornea at all. It sits on the whites of the eye. Because it sits on the scleral, that's why they're called scleral lenses. Now, they are a bit fiddly to fit, and they're quite fiddly to handle as well because they are so big. Um, but they are really, really durable. They last, last a long time, uh, but they are custom made, makes them expensive. So we can see here, got the glass contact lens here, so it's completely covering the cornea. It's not touching the cornea, but it goes over it and then sits on the white sclera. So we see better in this diagram underneath. Contact lens curves at the front, curves over, it clears the cornea, doesn't touch the cornea, and then just rests on the whites of the eye on the sclera instead. And with this diagram here, we've got some of the cornea at the front here that's a bit of an unusual shape. So they've got some kind of corneal disease and there's a few different ones out there. The most common one being 
keratoconus, which is a cone shaped um, cornea. And that, that unusual shape of the cornea means that an all contact lens doesn't fit properly on the cornea. So our soft lenses and gas perm balls don't, don't sit properly, they don't fit well, they're uncomfortable, they drift off the eye. Which with a scleral lens, because it doesn't touch the cornea, you don't have that problem. So it means in people with medical problems can still wear contact lenses successfully without having to worry about wearing glasses instead. So with scleral lenses, we can get really sharp, clear vision that isn't possible with other lens types. And then the, the fourth type, and for the long, the very, again, very small specialist type of lens is a hybrid lens. So it's a mixture between gas permeable and a soft lens. So they've got a rigid gas permeable in the centre. And having that RGP lens gives the lenses very, very good vision and good quality and good durability. But then around the edges, they've got um, a soft contact lens, what they call a skirt, which just sits around the edge. And that helps with the stability of the lens and improves the lens comfort. So they're a similar sort of size to a normal soft contact lens, around about 15 millimetres. So again, the soft lens part is sitting nicely just over the edge on the white of the eye with the gas permeable area in the middle. And uh, Synergize in the UK uh, does one called Duet. So here we see the gas permeable centre and then quite a big soft lens skirt language for stability. Uh, these lenses are available uh, for uh, multifocal and varifocals. So the Duet Progressive is their multifocal design. So it means then we can offer this option to, to more people. And a little bit more specialist, but it is something out there to help people that want good vision of a gas perm ball, but don't like the discomfort of a normal RGP lens. So we've covered quite a different types there. So to summarize, we've got the normal soft lens that drapes over the cornea, about 40 millimeters, so slightly bigger than the iris. We have the RGP lens. So that sat directly on the eye itself. We've got the scleral lens that sits on the white of the eye here and vaults completely over the cornea. And then you've got the hybrid, which is a combination of the first two lenses. So a little about the supply of contact lenses. Obviously at the moment with COVID-19, it's a little bit different in our um, supply rules. So I'll touch on that a little bit at, at, at the end before we've got a question about that. We just, we just talk about supply generally in the, the normal circumstances rather than at times of pandemic. And normally when we supply contact lenses, we need a specification. So your role as support staff is probably more in the, the ordering uh, contact lenses rather than being you know, involved in the fitting or anything like that. A contact specification tells us what the patient wears the prescription and the parameters of the lens. It's a bit different to a spectacle prescription um, because it relates solely to the lenses that they wear. If that specification goes out of date, then normally uh, we can't supply them with contact lenses. And when we are supplying people, we should make sure we don't oversupply them that takes them past the expiry of the specification. So what I mean by that is, if you've got a patient who's only got two months left on their specification for expires, under the, the rules, we shouldn't really be supplying with more than two months contact lenses because that's taken them past the expiry of their specification. Now, obviously in practice, we actually have to be a bit more flexible with that, particularly when we're supplying monthly lenses that might come in a three month pack. Uh, but that's what the general rules around um, the supply of lenses. Now, at the moment, uh, with the pandemics, uh, we are, a lot of places supplying people with contact lenses beyond their uh, specification uh, and that's thanks to a, a temporary change in the rules in the guidance from the General Optical Council uh, but only a registered professional, so an optometrist or a contact lens optician can make that decision because uh, as professionals we have to legally sign that off and therefore we take consequences for any uh, issues that, that might occur. Uh, similarly, if you're supplying anybody under the age of 16, that has to be under the supervision of an optometrist or a continent optician. So effectively, they need to be on the premises and, and sign off the order. And what we mean by specification? So 
always has dates on it, but it tells us the, the name of the lens. So we can see here we've got some Johnson Johnson lenses, just picked an example, I'm not favouring one manufacturer of another. But we, when we're checking the lenses when they come in, we need to check the, the name of the lens, obviously. So we see here, this one's for astigmatism. So we check the prescription. So we usually has a little D to tell us the dioptric power of the lens. So this is the sphere power. Uh, on these ones, we've got the cylinder axis. Same on the other pictures as well, we've got the sphere cylinder axis. You can make sure that those match you know, the specification when we order lenses. Um, similarly, the, the BC or the base curve, so that's that curve on the back of the lens. We need to make sure that's correct. Um, with most soft lenses, they only come in one base curve and one diameter. But with gas permeable lenses, we can specify that because they're um, custom made. So it's important we check all of these bits of data before we give lenses um, to patients. And that's all on the specification. Another thing that's on the specification is often the care regime. And it's really important that people look after their, their contact lenses. So, you think about the reusables, fill up the dailies, because daily disposable are warm and chucked away, you don't have to work cleaning those. But with the reusable lenses, it's important that we do regularly clean them because that helps to remove um, deposits that build up on the lens during the day of wear, and bits of dust and things from the tears. Um, similarly, cleaning them probably will kill germs. And if you've got nice clean lenses, then that helps to maintain the comfort of the lenses. Otherwise, like I said before about the continuous wear patients find that their fourth week isn't as comfortable, it's because it's more, more deposits, it's dirtier. So making lenses every day means that they're not going to be nice and comfortable, your kids are dirty, and they minimise the chances of having them. I'm also about having rinse. I'm seeing a little bit of a little lens. I'm going to place it about 15 seconds, so most don't make it that long. Most will stop after a few seconds, so we want to do it properly. So about that lens. That is flash moves the deposits. So if you're washing up, you see things that aren't like clean back to pocket between the deposits and the mark of the lake, rub it, and that's the consequence. It's a dish rub with a few fingers solution in your hand, and then rinsing it off, turning it over, and doing the other side of the lens as well. And it's been a good wipe down before you put it in the case, and then add the dim into the case, and then leave it overnight for the solution to killing uh, microbes that into the lens or the case. And to that solution, most patients, it's going to be multi purpose solutions. So I'm sure we've got a few different ones of these that you use at work. And this is what about 90% of the patients are using now is multi-purpose. So it came around in the late 90s, and this gave a one bottle solution. So it's nice and simple. No one no, on no, a separate thing of having different cleaners and conditioning solutions and wetting drops. It's one bottle to do everything with your contact lenses, and it's safe to put in your eye. So nice and straightforward, which is why so many people wear it. And the fact you can put it directly in the eye makes it nice and, and safe, but you do need to do that rub and mint stage with these solutions. And the alternative to multi-purpose <coughs> is um, hydrogen peroxide, not saline. I occasionally see patients that think saline is going to clean their lenses, it's not. So saline will keep lenses wet in the case, but saline that no, won't kill any bacteria, won't, won't disinfect the lenses. Whereas hydrogen peroxide works really well. So this is about 10% of this. You can tell the hydrogen peroxide solution because the lids at the top are red rather than white. And that's a little warning sign to let you know that it is a little bit dangerous because you get hydrogen peroxide in your eye, that's really, really gonna sting. So it's great at killing stuff, but we need to neutralize it before we wear the lenses. So we've got a neutralizing system it converts the peroxide into water, and that's often done with a platinum disc. So in the contact lens case, there will be this platinum disc at the bottom, lenses go in the cage, and then inside that, you end up with fizzing away, and that converts the peroxide um, into water after a few hours. And there's also a tablet version, which a visor do, where you put the lens in the solution, in the peroxide, leave it for a little while, and then once it's been lens long enough, you then add one of the tablets, and then that then converts the peroxide into water. It changes the solution to different color, and that we know that it's safe to take lenses out and wear them. So hydrogen peroxide is really effective at killing stuff. It's also preservative free, so it's great for patients that might have any allergies. We have to be really, really careful with that neutralization step so you don't get peroxide in the eye because it will sting a lot. It won't permanently damage the eye, 
but it will leave with a, with a red sorite for a few days. And as well as cleaning the lens, it's also important to clean the case. So we remind people not to use tap water with the lens or case because in the UK, tap water is not sterile. There are little bugs and that that are in the water that don't normally hurt us when we drink it. But if we get those in the eye, there is a potential then that it could uh, cause an infection. So to prevent that, we don't want tap water in the case to start with. You should never come into contact with the case. But in the morning when we put our lenses in, we empty that case of the solution and then let it air dry so that way bacteria can't grow in the case. It's also important that we discard the lens of the case and replace it regularly. And uh, the phrase we use at, at work is dirty and 30. So remind people to change their contact lens every month. Particularly if they're on a dark debit plan where they're getting a monthly lens, then we just change the lenses and chuck those away. You might as well start with a fresh case as well. And that's why a lot of solutions come with cases so people don't you know, keep the old one for sentimental reasons and use it for months and months and months because it will get dirtier. And what happens is the bacteria build up what we call a biofilm in the lens case, and that biofilm makes these, the cleaning solution less effective. And we also give patients a list of do's and don'ts. Um, I won't go through these. There is a handout you can download at the end that has these on in more detail. But we call a wear and care guide normally because these things are put in place to make sure that the person the lens is safe, they're not going to have any problems with the lenses and they're going to have nice, clear, comfortable vision. So you better download the slide for this rather than me going through it all now to be a forever doing that. So you can guides at work and see what's in there and compare it to the list that I put together. And last thing I look at is some common questions. So normally, because you're the first person the patient's going to see and they come into the practice, you're more likely to be asked a lot of the questions about contact lenses. And I'm sure employees will talk about contact lenses to more people. And that's what I want you to offer it to everybody. And the question I want to ask is to ask patients, would you be interested in trying contact lenses? Not with the right question to be asking, because that's a very closed question. You're only going to get a yes or no answer. And most of the time, people are caught off guard and they're just going to say no. And that's the end of the conversation. A better way to talk to people about contact lenses is to talk about a slightly different tact. So first of all, try and phrase it around about their current situation about their current glasses. So questions such as, are there times when glasses are inconvenient to you? Are there times when you'd rather not wear your glasses? Is a more open question. You're not mentioning contact lenses, you're asking about their glasses and when they don't want to wear them, when they're inconvenient. And that gets the patient thinking a bit more. And that way they're more likely to tell you something. Yeah, they're more likely to say yes and give an example of when their glasses are a problem. That then gives you an opportunity to then talk about the benefits of contact lenses. Right? So you can have much more conversation with the patient. It's not that direct no straight away. You can actually tell them about the benefits of the lenses first. And that will usually elicit some more questions from them, but it gets that conversation going. There's a much better start than just saying to people, are you interested in trying contact lenses? It's not the best question. You need to be a bit more creative in, in how you ask it. Now, some of the other common questions that, that people tend to ask. The most common one I get asked is, well, can it go behind my eye? Well, the answer is no, it can't. It's physically impossible for that to happen because the eye is designed in a way, it has something called the conjunctiva, that lines the, on top of the white of the eye and lines the eyelids, and it's nature's way of stopping anything going behind your eye. So you say to say people, no, that's not possible to happen. Uh, you might get it under your top eyelid, but that's really easy to remove. So I've got no issues about contact lenses hiding behind your eye, and getting lost forever. Uh, a little bit asked about the age of them, particularly when it comes to children. And the answer to that really is that basically any age can wear contact lenses. I've got plenty of people in their 70s that are still wearing contact lenses quite happily. I fitted um, seven and eight-year-old with contact lenses. I know within the hospital, sometimes they'll fit even younger than that. So age is not a barrier for contact lenses. Anybody of any age can wear them. Um, a lot of people are some hesitant about the handling of them. And really, again, you should reassure them, you know, we will teach you how to do that. It's really simple. You take one session, you'll pick it up really quickly, and you'll find it's really easy once you've done it. 
So don't let handing be an excuse for some trying lenses. But there's a lot of people that think they can't have them because they're prescription, perhaps because they've got astigmatism like me, or perhaps they need verified glasses. That's fine, no problem with that. We can still correct that, no problem. We've got topic lenses that correct astigmatism. Um, we've got multifocal or verifocal contact lenses, A, to see distance and read. So again, prescription is not a problem with contact lenses. And also, do they hurt? Well, no, not anymore. The old style lenses go back 40 years. Yes, they were uncomfortable at first. Gas permits do take a while to get used to. I know that from trying them. But modern soft lenses, no, you put them in, within a couple of minutes, you wouldn't even know they're there. So they're so soft, we don't have to worry about any discomfort. Um, similarly with soft lenses, we don't have to worry about them falling out either, because we will fit the lens that properly to your eye. Because it's well fitted, it's not going to fall out. You might be able to move it slightly if you rub your eye, but modern lenses won't just fall out on their own. That's not going to happen. There's no worry about that. Another one's about um, makeup and what they should do. Well, yeah, fine, but put your lenses in first. Not only does it allow you to see what you're doing better when you put your lenses in, you can see your makeup easier, but also you have that risk of actually getting makeup in your eye. If you've had you know, mascara and then try to put a lens in, you might get some of that scar in your eye with the contact lens, and that's going to sting and affect your vision. So, contact lens first, uh, and makeup after. And the last question people ask is about cost. That's a more difficult question to, to answer because the prices vary so much. And within our practice, you know, we've got different modalities, but you know, dailies, reusables, Torics, silicon hydrogels. There's a lot of different variety of lenses. I'm sure we've got a long price, you know, long prices that work all different combinations of prices on it. So if I ask about price, really can't get a proper answer. And um, with that, it says, you know, it's best to actually book in with an expert about contact lenses, discuss the options, uh, and they can advise you on what the best options for you are and what the costs are. Because if you try and pick a number out of thin air, they can remember that number. And if you've told them it's you know, 20 pounds a month and then they have their appointment and it's 40 pounds a month, they're gonna be disappointed because they, in their mind, they've got that price you've told them. So someone does ask about the cost. You can say, you know, well, we do, you know, we do diet debits, we do different paint plans, but it's really best that you speak to one of our experts um, to discuss what's best for you because there's lots of different lenses out there and our experts will find the best lens for you. So that's the end of the um, common questions. So we've got a couple of questions being been put in to uh, I'll answer those in a moment. But thank you very much for your time. We've hit the hour and uh, that's when you just want to contact me afterwards uh, in optical training. Um, similarly, we are on um, Twitter and Instagram. We also take a look at our website where we do uh, courses for support staff. We've got level two and level three qualifications, and the upcoming optical assistant apprenticeship, and we do bespoke training in CET. Uh, if you are a, a site care member, then go to the site care website, so sitecare.co.uk slash training. Have a look on there. There's some training on there you can access, as well as some um, online academy modules. There's 10 different ones on there you can choose from, um, and they're on a special discount um, for site care members. Um, and in terms of training, um, if you are interested in finding more about training options and, and training up people um, when we go back to work after the pandemic, uh, next Monday, uh, site care running a special session, and I'll be on there explaining training options, um, what site care has got in mind coming up over the next year or so for you. Uh, I hope you answer some questions that you might have on training. So that's um, next Monday. So it's a bit more of an open um, webinar to answer your questions, but we'll help you run through a few different uh, training uh, options for you and what's available. Um, we've got a few questions uh, come in. So, so there's three, that's so I'll try and answer those. Um, first one's asked about, um, is neovascularization reversible? So that was that bit where you said about the blood vessel growth into the cornea due, over, due to overwear. Now, once those blood vessels have grown into the cornea, they won't disappear. But what does happen is that if you take the lens away and allow oxygen to get back to the cornea, then over time, those blood vessels empty of the blood and they become transparent and they become what we call ghost vessels. 
So the vessels are still there, but they're not full of blood anymore. So they can't be seen, so the eye looks much better. And because they're empty of blood, they're less likely to affect the person's vision. So that's not completely reversible. We can you know, turn the clock back a bit and, and undo some of that, um, that damage that it's doing to their, their vision. Um, so I was about the internet supply to customers. Uh, so how to arrange aftercare points with internet supply. Well, um, before I was furloughed, uh, we were doing some telephone triage appointments um, in order that we could continue to supply our patients with contact lenses during the pandemic and during the lockdown period. Um, so that the patients that we, we spoke to during March and April um, we put them onto a short recall, so rather than classing it as there are any aftercare, uh, when we phoned them to talk through their, their symptoms and their compliance, uh, we just put them a short recall so that we would call them back uh, in September uh, to get them to come in for a proper aftercare appointment. So based on the General Opera Council guidance on their website, we have um, supplied people um, through the websites of our suppliers to get their lenses sent to home. And that's taken a bit past their specification expiry, but temporarily we've extended that period of time under the GOC just to keep them in wearing lenses uh, for a few months until we can see them properly uh, for their aftercare. But once we eventually do reopen um, properly and are able to start seeing people again for their aftercares, then the law will go back to being as it is, which we means will be more difficult to. Um, supply them so at the moment we're slightly bending the rules with permission from the general Opera council uh, but you know once things start to open up properly that will go back to being the normal rules around if it's out of date um, you can't supply them um, and then another question about um, solutions which we sort of covered some of that already uh, the only thing we didn't cover was the cleaning of gas permeable lenses um, but that's pretty similar to soft lenses you still do that that rub of each surface and the difference with the gas permeable lens is that because they are they do last much longer you know typically a year um, some patients will supplement their cleaning with um, a protein remover tablet in in some saline every sort of couple of months and using that protein remover tablet dissolved in saline with the lens in just give the lens an extra an extra clean um, just to make it prolong the life uh, of the lens and the last question, someone's asked about the hybrid lenses. Um, so that, that those lenses are normally replaced on a, a six monthly um, basis. Brilliant, that's the, the question there. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this session and the previous uh, webinars as well. Don't forget if you missed any of the Sitecare webinars, they're all available to, to watch again um, via the Sitecare website. And if you are interested in hearing about more about training options, um, do come back next Monday and uh, we'll have a little more live webinar then. Um, well, I'll tell you about the different options available and hopefully answer any questions that, that you have um, about, about training post, post COVID. So thank you very much for your time and um, enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. <laughs>